Welcome to Nameless Debate Radio, where radioactivity is contagious. You can join us in broadening our minds on the Nameless Debates Discord via the link below, and even feature here yourself, if you've got what it takes. Wait, oh, the governor, aren't you, aren't you from uh, fucking, aren't you originally UP. censored? Yeah. Oh, yeah, God. we just spoke the other What's way. What's a hematoma? Oh, God. Uh, a, subdural, a subdural hematoma is when the uh, matter um, on the inside of your skull bleeds and puts pressure on your brain. That certainly really? you. It explains no. a lot. Any yeah, hematoma and I said, in like general, I, said, I have it's... very limited medical knowledge, but hematoma in general is internal bleeding. <laughs> yeah. If you hit yourself and there is a purple mark, that's a hematoma. Yeah, but a subdural hematoma is um, is in the subdural space. Stop what about a, what, what, but what about anyway. a subdermal hematoma? What, but what about a subdermal hematoma when he's bleeding from his anus? I mean, what do that's... we do there? <laughs> it's not some girl I'm a girl then. Um, but it's oh, a good I'm sorry, don't let me because... derail this. Have the conversation y'all were already having. I don't want to do this. We were talking we're about what is real communism. Well, originally don't it was what is fascism. Well, I don't know. It was originally it? actually well, whether wait, or not I'm a right winger. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. What was the definition? But nobody of cares about you, you as a person. So. A reactionary <laughs> movement which is highly militaristic in nature. Well, what, if I, what if I make and the reason, and here's the thing, the reason that is broad, which is where do you where do you get earlier. the definition from? Hold on, I just let, let him. Let I him don't exactly get thing. a definition. It's an observation made when you look at every single nation oh that has God. been fascist throughout the, history. Oh, hold on, one at a time. You continue, please. That okay. is a terrible way to argue. Well, no, it's an observation because when you look at every single nation that has been fascist, whether in South America or Europe or Japan or in Asia, that is the one defining aspect that you can find between all of them, especially with the fact that like uh, fascist nations in South America, which were propped up by the United States, weren't exactly heavily like, oh, hey, let's burn the Jews. Oh, hey, let's enforce state religion. Now, some of them were, but a lot of them were simply military dictatorships, such as Chile. I, wouldn't call I do miss that. But yeah, like that's the reason why I like it's not a definition, it's an observation. If he was looking okay. for a definition, I'd just Google it, but I really don't like playing definition games. Especially okay, when it comes to things like when we talk about socialism. My my Julius is, loves definition. Hold on, games. hold on, hold on, hold on. I've got I've got a serious question. So once I build the O'Neill cylinder in space and I start my own Xeon fascist dictatorship in that colony. It technically, is it fascism? Because it's a progressive fascist movement in space. We're not reacting to anything. We're progressing into the unknown. Well, not necessarily, because here's the thing. What would, go, what would make you want to go for that sort of fascist dictatorship? Because you're, you're, you're in a fucking cylinder in the middle of space, and you've got to control people because you can all die if one person fucks up. Well, okay, and you well, also don't well, need fascism well, to have that happen. No, no, no. One, one possible reason is because he enjoys diversity and he has many such cylinders and one of them voluntarily decided to go fascist for fashion. Yeah. Fashion fascist. Yeah. You know, just like in the future, you would have people who would voluntarily, you know, have the flu potentially or some other disease because they want to experience it on themselves. If it's yeah. a voluntary exchange. Why not? Adventurous. Would it be fascist? Well, yes, because if you look at what the call, because if you look at what like is actually going on within that little like cylinder in space, yeah. Okay, so a military like, dictatorship, be, like mil a militaristic society with a dictatorship, is fascism. Well, that's an over. That's a broad simplification of it. But there are many other factors that have to go into it, but. Um, like coupled with the fact that like does it pro does it protect capitalism and the free market, right? No, like, wait, that's wait, another we'll, thing we'll, that fascist we'll societies have done all throughout history. Well, hold on, because I I'm not sure if you're familiar with this, but we actually know through the the Mises Institute's actually done a very good academic research on this. Uh, during the war, Hitler decided when he was invading the Soviet Union that he decided to change the economy after the war to the economy of Russia to essentially planned to a command control economy and he was going to remove the capitalist aspects because he believed that the soviet model was more efficient so what if i go with hitler's ideal national socialist fascism without the race stuff 
but is is that still then fascism in space in a cylinder okay so here's what i would ask then is it state capitalism or is it state socialism state socialism okay it would be state socialism yes okay could i have a link to this because like he literally purged the strasserist movement inside of his own party during the line of long night <laughs> yeah but that was in, yeah, but, yeah. How's that? How's that? How's that? Uh, you won. That was str- 19- no, no, no. Oh, I just oh, like thinking about the night of long knives. Yeah, I, I know, but it's not, but that was in 1933. I mean, that or 32. Oh, we're talking- uh, no, it was, it was it was 33 after the enabling. It was either 1933 yeah, yeah, or 1934 after the enabling act. Okay, okay, okay. I said, I said he changed his mind in 1941 when he when he started to invade the Soviet Union. There's, there's actually yes. books can I, on Can I add this. something? I, I recently read that article because we were about to engage in that very discussion. And if you open up right now, just the Wikipedia overview article on a national socialist economy, it will start by saying that, you know, initially it was a shift to the right towards private property, towards ownership. Um, and you can see lists of things that they did that were a shift to the right. But then you see things, for example, like, when they um, privatized a certain union, they did not really privatize it by giving it to like a private entity. They privatized it and gave it to uh, some other group that was defined as a private group, which was really just an offshoot of the Nazi party. And you can see many other uh, moves that were um, in words described as privatization, but in, a, in, in action on paper were like um, steps back towards collectivization. So you have to read that history very, very carefully because you can, like he said, you, you can point to, to like 31, 30, to, to the early 30s and see um, pro-capitalist uh, policies from, let's say, Nazi Germany. And if you look at the late 30s, uh, as early as 35, they start doing policies that are not very pro-capitalist. And there is a clear uh, decision that at one point... Um, Hitler has to make where uh, even before he invades Russia, uh, he has to decide whether to go into a war economy, which would mean uh, a more socialist economy with state control over corporations uh, and and big industry, or go towards you know continue the policy that he had in the early 30s of just okay. Can I stop you there? Any shifts towards more uh, socialism? It's clearly okay, can I stop you there? Uh, sorry, I just one more interject very very quickly. The reality is they never enacted the socialist economy, obviously, because they lost the war. But we actually know through diary entries of the high command people in his inner circle that during the Russian campaign, he changed his mind on what the economy would be post-war. So the idea, eventual idea of the economy would have been state socialism. All right. Well, even then, like I would want to see that. And second off, tenet, if a command economy is socialist, in your own words, if there are other things that like uh, you know go towards that, then like feel free to tell me. But if a command economy is socialist, then that means that China, South Korea, and all other capitalist economies that have had command economies are no longer capitalist, even though they've had free markets and trade, because a lot of the industry was having direction from the state. No, that's no, that's not a command economy. A command economy is identified as when the entire economy is under the command of the government for for essentially ever. That's the, the plan. We're not talking about a command war economy or anything of that. If anything, China, with its fascist dictatorship of Xi Jinping, it's, a, it's literally a national socialist fascist dictatorship um, without the... Well, some of the race stuff. I mean, they, they, they've they locked up the Muslims in concentration camps. Oh, yeah. Well, um, I think what's even more important is I would never defer, defend, like, try to defend an assertion. That, um, I think it's very hard to defend the proposition. And I think you're, you're doing a slight straw man of calling something, uh, like, entirely socialist or trying to define what is the border which, what you should do historically is you, you should look, you know, this is the state of private ownership and corp and capitalism in the Weimar Republic, for example. And then you can see a shift in government towards Nazi Germany. And you can see two periods of the uh, 
initial period uh, until like let's say 35 and then 1935 and then the period when they started implementing the the so-called four-year plans and war preparations now and you can look at these distinct periods and say in this period they became more capitalist did they became like a capitalist society at that state maybe you can even say yes but then you can say after that they became more socialist okay and that would whether that still falls under capitalist or that becomes a socialist society that's a bit harder for uh, to answer i don't think it's like an easy easy thing to pin down you you would, we would have to discuss evidence and details to understand that yes what, what i'm saying is there are clear signs that as the war as it got closer to the war and as the war progressed the socialist part of national socialism became a lot more prominent uh, sorry to interrupt. I posted a intro, a very elementary introduction to, of the Mises Institute into Hillary and economics. Hey, dude, Get could you uh, could you re can you repost that in Tavern Text Chat? Uh, oh, sorry, sorry, in in where? Sorry. Like, yeah, there's chat. like a text chat channel for the VCs, um, so it doesn't clog up main because main's having uh, a different discussion. Gotcha, man. Yeah. Um, also, really quickly. I was not trying to straw man. I was not trying to make a straw man of what the economy was. Like from what I heard from you, Tenet, it sounded like it was a bit of a straw man by saying it was a command economy. That's what I was hearing, and that was why I responded in the way I did. Okay, does, does that clear it up? Sure. Okay. Yeah, I, I think it's. It would be very easy for you to defend, basically saying, "Well, you know." And I, I, the last time we engaged in this, I'll refer to like our last unrecorded discussion. It, it was kind of interrupted, but I did. Wait. I opened it up with something of a meme because I tried to start start things up. So we're no longer memeing now. And there's like um, I listed. I mean, Wikipedia is not a great reference, but uh, I think. Well, that, well I think no, it's a good. It's a good one. It's a good. It's a good intro, right? Yeah. Elementary intro, yes. Yeah. Um, also, just to clarify, Spider was literally like. I don't want to say abusing my power, but he was like intentionally moving me between table one and like table two intentionally to. Don't worry, we, 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 uh, we already spoke about it in private. It's, it's, it's sorted. Well, still, like I'm sorry that happened. I tried telling him to yeah, stop. Right. And I tried getting Achilles, but yeah. That, that's that's what he resolved. It's good. It's all good. All right. Anyway, so where sorry. were we? We were. Um, so how does this all relate to the definition of fascism? Oh, because well, you you mentioned that fascism is about. Um, is somehow linked to capitalism, right, uh, Adric? Well, um, his, his original assertion was that it's a reactionary militaristic movement with a militaristic government. Yeah. Well, yeah, and... Yeah, that is what I said. And, yeah, but, like, that does get rid of a lot of the nuance. That does get rid of a lot of facts about it, but that's the best way I can put it. Have like, you, even, uh, like... Like even uh, Mark Bray or um, what? Uh, who's the guy who wrote the Anatomy of Fascism? Uh, I can't remember his name, but yeah, like even they said there is no one singular definition because it changes based on the nation or place that it, uh, that it um, takes root in. I, I've I'm not sure I like this. This sounds too flexible to me. And it if is, you look at, point. I, I'd it much rather like start definition. with a dictionary definition and try to figure out if it's flawed in any way. Yeah. And in and I would want as evidence that it's flexible not to hear like some named person's opinion but to hear their actual arguments like why is, is it like, not that word like why can't you use italian fascism as the um the benchmark and then judge every single other based on attributes well actually italian fascism is kind of the benchmark because it was the because like benito Mussolini yeah, but, was the but, one who invented Adorat, fascism Adorat, and it was the Adorat. first place Adorat. Adorat. Uh, the in sync, you gotta you gotta up your volume by like 200 percent. no joke Something is off. Uh, what about now? Now it's just buzzy. Now? Still, uh, still sound, it sounds the same, but yeah, go ahead. Can you guys hear him? It's just me. I, I, I can't hear him. No, 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 I, 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 I can hear a bit of him. What about now? Better. 
Um, so, like, the definition you started with, Adorat, is, like, something along the lines of the sort of thing someone does when they say, here's this thing, this thing is really horrible, and then they say everybody who disagrees with me is this thing. <laughs> no, it's not that. And I said it wasn't a definition. I said it was an observation when looking at all countries which have adopted it. But you're basically doctrine. treating it as your definition. That's what you're doing. No, I'm not treating it as a definition. I've said multiple times in this discussion, we can go back, I said it's an observation. Yes, what do you think the definition. difference is between an observation that summarizes a, a phenomena and a definition? I've got like, to interject on the defense of, of, um, his, the, his, of this guy. He did say it was just his observation. When sure, sure, I heard it. that. It's like, it's, that, like, but... it's, it's like a flexible definition because no, the but... thing is, there is no one definition, but the left I um, don't forms know it that that. that makes any sense. There are definitions for things. When you're giving a summarization of a phenomenon, you are trying to give a definition. That's what that is. Yeah, but the phenomenon does, it's, it's the problem is the, basically the only continuous standard is that it's a militaristic government with a militaristic society that uses force to silence those that they don't like. Yes, there, there's an element I would agree is definitely central to fascism, is using force to suppress opposition and opposite opinions. But by that, that definition, uh, every socialist society is under that. Yes, definition. exactly. So the Soviet Union would be one example of a fascist society. Is is everybody in agreement on that? I I, I don't mind. Yes. Yeah, I don't yes. have a problem with that. Yeah, okay, I don't have a problem with that. But like I'm saying, like Adorat, you didn't mention the suppression of a opposite opinion. That's one of the reasons I knew immediately that your definition was wrong. Except it's not a definition. How many times do I have to fucking say this? I'm telling you, dude. An observation oh, that summarizes right. a phenomenon is an attempt to define. But but actually, you were asked by uh, Captain Devil to provide a definition, so. That's literally what he said. That's fine. Do you guys actually want to go to some kind of a proposition while we have the bot recording so we have something interesting? Seems like we're circling around something, but nobody can pin it. Well, again, the point is the left knows you can't exactly define it. That's why. Basically, it's a combination of nationalism. You Look, mean it's not? It, 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 it's it's what I said before with the military and the oppression. To be clear, but but also it's it's about focusing on the your tribe of the tribes of other people and being discriminatory against other people in some way. To be well, clear, you, you mean the left thinks it can't really be defined, right? Well, because the if the le the, the the internationalist left will say, well, everyone should be free to go everywhere, and we're all one people, and anything okay. that it, okay. it is, because they're happy to use. The Look, I understand. The what's forces. the difference between what's the difference between what you think and what you know? Also, in sync, it's not just the left. If scholars who write about fascism, like Robert Pax, and that's the thing, if scholars cannot properly define or, or find a unifying there's definition, a definition or, of it on Wikipedia, there's a, de there's a definition of it on Wikipedia, all right? They did a fucking far side better than your definition. Look it up. Okay, well, we'll, we'll define well, it for us then. Uh, one of the things we'll I only left five mine. God damn. There, 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 is a, there is a problem in academia, and it goes like this. Um, you can't have a precise definition of anything, therefore nothing can be defined. And it yeah. falls, it's, it's actually part of like many philosophical discussions about morality and other things, and it has a, a very simple answer. The, the answer is heuristics and cluster definitions. You can have a cluster definition, and people do use heuristics, and because of that, you can be asked to define something, even if it's hard to define, and you can't... Mm -hmm. And it's, we do this all the time for many different concepts. So I don't entirely buy this idea. Um, something can be hard to pin down. We can still have a useful heuristic for it. Also, if okay, I may quickly so interject. Adorai. Also, hang on. If I may quickly interject, I want you to go to this page right here. Sure. It literally says a definition of fascism and fascist governments has been a complicated and highly discussed no, you subject went, concerning the me, exact nature of fascism and its core tenets in the, amongst historians. Look, no, I'm shush. Just, you're saying, do, hey, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let him finish. Do you know? Let's... Do you know what cherry picking is? Yes, I know what cherry picking is. 
Like, What's you cherry went picking? on Wikipedia. Explain. I googled it. Explain Wikipedia. cherry picking I, to me. No, except here's the thing. Adam, I googled Adam, Wikipedia Adam, definition Adam, of fascism. This is what came up. Le- Oi, hey, hey, answer my question. Do you know what cherry picking is? Yes, I know what cherry picking is, and I've answered Explain. that. Explain. Explain it. Cherry picking is when you try and find specific information in order to in order to fit. Okay. Your, yes. Correct. Your point. So what you did was you searched on Wikipedia definition of fascism, right? And the article you went to was clearly not what most people would go to. You went to an article that supported your point of view, which talked about how fascism is difficult to define. No, what I didn't. Said, oh, shut no, up. I didn't. No, I didn't. Exactly the same thing you that you did. What I mean, Tennant said? I no. Mean, hey, no. Most people will go to the Wikipedia page for fascism, not the Wikipedia page that says definitions wait, of fascism. Wait, 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 this is autistic. Wait, 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 wait guys, wait. Shut up. Before you eviscerate him on that, 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 I'm fine with him bringing this, this document because that document is actually containing information that may invalidate the original point. And, we can, and I, can, I would use that if this was my part in the debate. Just read the actual, uh, read the full, all the, those both par- paragraphs, and you will see what's going on here. There is, there, and this is a very simple thing. We all know this. There is fascism as a political term, as a political movement, and there is fascism as the abused word that's been misused in literature and... Okay. And basically, Godwin's law of calling somebody like, a Nazi that you disagree with. Just it's, it's, okay. there's a pejorative use of the word, and this sure. article is a clear example of that. There is just just to wrap up the the thing that he said, though, right? He linked this as if it supported his position because it talks about how fascism is difficult to to define, and that was the point that you already eviscerated. The point before, right, when you said yeah. just because things are difficult to, fa- to define doesn't mean that we don't have a definition of them or that we can't come up with one. And reading okay. through what this says, all it says is that although it's difficult to define, most scholars agree about certain characteristics, and that is what we would call the definition at a right. Okay, so what do you think the definition is? Since you're eviscerating him, you must know the answer. I'm going to give you the definition on the Wikipedia page for fascism, which is what I would have expected Adarite to go to to begin with. Which give is, us a definition. Fascism then. is a form of radical, right-wing, authoritarian, ultranationalism characterized by dictatorial power, forcible suppression of opposition, and strong regimentation of the society and the ec- ec- economy, Wow, which came to prominence in early 20th century Europe. There okay, so I was right. I was right. All it is, it's exactly the same as the Soviet Union, but it's just your people and not the world. There you mm-hmm. go. That sounds right. There, that's the grand fucking definition. Actually, no, it's not the exact same <laughs> as the Soviet Union. Like, Jesus fucking Christ. Okay, and that's also it, implying... It, it differs because okay. of different, like, other other parts of the policies. Not, It's not just... The yeah, so it might share some similarities, right? Yeah. But what the Soviet Union is, and I don't like that as much as I don't like fascism, has differentiation, right? It has a different political... Sh- like, it, it has different political goals. It, like, it, it adheres to I different know, it's economic... internationalist theories. revolution. Yeah. That's what I said. It's... It, well, fascism, it's, it's fascism. You no, know, it has people. several other aspects that differentiate it, and you right, just just explain. say that they are like to like. But do you know what? If you're going to say they like to like, good. That's then a reason explain. to explain. Here, he, don't, here's my don't explanation. Don't tell me I'm wrong. Tell me the why best explanation. The, the, do you know what? The most utility I can get out of this is who to put up against a fucking wall. Okay, well, that's I mean, not helpful to anybody. Uh, it's, like, well, it's a helpful identifier to who's useless and doesn't deserve an opinion. It isn't a big difference whether or not you actually do like <clears throat> want to socialize the means of production. Because fascists don't necessarily. Well, like I said at the beginning of this, I don't know if you came in, but we know that through actual diary entries of the high command of Hitler's inner circle, that Hitler changed his idea of what the economy would be post-war, that he was going to model... But but that's the difference, right? And this is the difference that the Soviet Union wasn't actually... So, so like, like state Marxism, like, kind of like a... Yeah, like... like, Basically was definitely dictatorial and that's once again where if we look at like marxism and socialism they have definitions as well they have sets similar mm-hmm. to fascism but just like fascism they have differentiations as well yeah why do you think there are different words 
you know what I mean? Like this attempt to say like, oh, it's just this thing, but with a with a little tweak that I can like easily summarize. It's it's sort of immature because like the reason we have different definitions is because the difference different is big enough to talk about. Well, seriously, uh, well, no, the actually, reason actually, there are different there's words. There's an important question being missed here. To talk about. There's an important question being here. What difference does it make? What difference does it make between fascism and socialism? When we're part, when we're part, when we're trying to decide between a pile of absolute shit and a pile of absolute trash. What Why difference does it make? If the difference because... it makes. No, here's the difference. The difference is what the reasons are for the people who want to put it into place. No, all, all, the all I have to know is. So you know, the only reason that I need to know what it is is how to dispose of it correctly. Well, well, here. Yes, here, exactly. Here's one of the here's one of the reasons why definitions are important, and this is to me this is a problem that I see with even this article on fascism. Um, it starts by saying that fascism is a form of radical right wing authoritarian and so on and so forth, and the right wing refers specifically to a right wing of, um, and if you click on right, at the very top, social orders, hierarchies are inevitable, natural, normal, desirable. It's about social, a so, sort of extreme right is supposed to be about a sort of social Darwinism and about um, meaning nobody should be involved in picking the winners, okay? And one of the problems I have with identifying fascist regimes historically as right wing is that they did pick the winners eventually. Like um, Nazism started in the 1930s throughout, let's say, 35 but if, if you look even as early as 35, they started picking the winners. They started picking winners. For example, one of their biggest, most famous policies that I've read about was that they eliminated all private business that was under a certain amount of capitalization. So if you had less than a certain amount of, of money in your business, you were completely removed. So many small businesses were eliminated by National Socialism. That means that they already were picking the winner, meddling in the market. That makes them inherently against uh, any sort of Darwinistic or natural hierarchical position. Can I ask make you a question? Them, okay. That makes them against right-wing. And yet in the definition, right-wing is like the first thing that comes up. Yeah. Also, can I ask a question real quick, Tenet? Um, I'm somewhat familiar with the policy you're talking about. Um, were were the people who the businesses were taken away from? Weren't they all Jews, or was it or was it all small businesses? They they said that anyone I, I, I as I've read it on wiki on that Wikipedia page, anyone who had income under forty thousand uh, Reichsmarks at the time was completely eliminated, and I believe you had to have at some point two hundred thousand in your business or. I don't know if that was the amount of like your operating of your income or something, um, but that was basically they implemented a cutoff for small business. I don't know of a single like um, right wing uh, society, really right wing or like right wing in terms of economic right wing or, or social Darwinism that would promote just picking winners that way. Because it, it means that you are preventing people from growing from a small business to a big one. It means that you give an advantage to existing monopolies. And if you read through that page, you see example after example of both fascists and Nazis reinforcing existing monopolies to benefit the state, to in increase their political influence. Well, yeah. And also one of the reasons behind that, and I can happily get you the um, article on them, is the fact that big businesses were helping to prop up the Nazi government through funding. Like they received in today's money, like, actually, no, I don't even think it was today's money, like back then money, like $30 million towards the Nazi government right before the uh, election of 1933 was about to happen. Yeah, but, but you understand why I'm mentioning all of this? Because Julius asked the question, why are we discussing this? Why are definitions important? Well, one of the reasons is this, to discuss definitions is to see whether the definitions are... No, no, that's... Whether they're Tenet, internally what I meant. consistent. Oh, whatever. Whether they're Sorry, internally consistent. Okay. What, what were you what going I, to do? That's what I meant by why we're we discussing this was obviously I know definitions are important. I, should be, I know all of these things. What okay. I mean is why are we specifically having this discussion about... Fascism and socialism. Socialism is it is it to demonize socialism or is it to just like 
make fascism seem good? Like, well, what well, is the actual intent of the discussion? Uh, well, the, the intent of the discussion, itself. it's because right now, as, we live, as we're alive today, uh, the term right-winger is ex- or, or far-right is an extremely pejorative term. And the way people make it pejorative is that they assign the, the far-right label to people who support fascist and Nazi ideology. And if we can okay. if we can see that as inconsistent, then we can question that. And if we can't question that, then we have to admit that it's true. So it's either true or false. And the result of that is people's lives are either maintained or their lives are like ruined because they there is an assertion right now that let's say that I am I am a centrist because I believe that some that you know, let's say the medicine needs to be um, a government institution but private property should also exist. So I'm somewhere in the center between a complete collectivist and a complete capitalist. And there's an assertion that as I go towards the right, I should be increasing the social Darwinism, meaning uh, I should be increasing, you know, I should be in favor of privatization. And the f- so at a certain point when I go right, I hit the point where I'm libertarian, where I'm a minarchist for a very small government. And then suddenly a switch is flipped and I'm a full-blown Nazi. How does that work? Because the way they define it again is that it's for your, you're focusing on one group of people over another group of people. And the ones who call everyone else they don't like fasci- uh, fascists, they're internationalist communists and they want everybody to be in the utopia, not just a few people. It's not a complicated... So do you, I, I, I do have to ask... Are you a fasci? Because I, because I think, because it sounds like you might be. I thought about it, but power fucking corrupts. The, it, it would turn into a shit show. So no, I mean, I, I'm a not minicus because I think the idea of always trying to make government smallest, no matter what, is a retarded principle. Because there are many things that you need to regulate, and the government should run healthcare and it should run the water companies and electricity and shit like that but i'm more i'm an individualist okay so that doesn't actually mean anything well no Uh, because it does because a fascist hold on fascism is a collective structure stratering of society to the will of the government I don't believe that. Okay, to say saying you're an individualist doesn't give me any useful information. Basically, is, is what yeah, I, like, I mean, I, as far as as far as I understand, minarchism it's minimizing government as much as like as is practically possible, right? Okay, well then I'd be a minarchist if that's the definition. Some people define it differently from from people I've talked to. I think that's. I actually think that's a bit of a useless. That doesn't really. Once again, that's kind of a useless definition, um, in sync. Because no, arguably, that's well, what I don't agree. I think there's certain ideologies doing. I think there's certain categories of like service that need to like involve the state, like as he said, like medicine, for instance, obviously. And that's actually like a relatively yeah. contentious issue worldwide because lots of states don't yeah. provide medicine. Oh uh, no! But the point is, is that. Um, Every ideology is technically thinking that exact thing. And minicism is usually so? referring to an absolute minimal thing, right? So it's, it's like it, it's well, usually more that. extreme libertarian. Yeah, you, no, it is. It's, it's a categorization grouping. I, I would like you to, ad- try to address it directly. Like, I, I asked a question because I'm that, that was a source of my confusion for a very long time. I did not understand the classical political spectrum and now that that I'm forced to engage in a debate where I actually get to read the article, like I'm forced to actually try to comprehend what it says, I don't understand the even the Wikipedia article on fascism. I don't understand how it works. If it says it's not one definition, they change the let the internationalist communists change the definition. No, no, that's your that. answer. Yeah, and and I understand your answer. Uh, as far as I understand the answer, the answer is that like. There's a lot of different policies being considered, and it's like you like call it left or right wing based on the aggregate attitude, not the individual policies. So basically, also, ah, okay. Something else I would add, and 
just a fun little and, and like just quickly um tenant the way that i understand left wing and wing and right wing is basically that right wings are in favor of like conservatives we call them conservatives because they're in favor of conserving what we've got because it's valuable and then left wings are in favor of changing what we've got because it has problems and it's we could maybe build something better yeah that's your understanding but if you look at and and again i'm not attacking you i'm just looking at uh, maybe, sure. maybe, maybe the Wiki, I, when I look at the Wikipedia um, article. No, no, but you're saying it doesn't make wait, sense, wait, right? Wait, I, I understand it as the current worldview of most of society, or at least if you believe in a left -lean, leaning bias in academia, then that bias will manifest itself in Wikipedia, which is fine. It, it, regardless of how you view this, this is mainstream view. The mainstream view is that it says, and I quote, right wing politics hold that certain social orders and hierarchies are inevitable natural normal desirable typically supporting this position on the basis of natural law economic tradition period and then it goes into detail and if and i know but it's not about it's not about the social darwinism i don't know where you're getting that idea ready like on the left right political spectrum wikipedia page it says in france where the terms originated the left has been called the party of movement and the right, the party of order. We call left-wingers progressives and right-wingers conservatives. And there is a reason for that. Uh, I, I understand, but that's an even, to me, an even more incoherent definition compared to what, what is happening historically. Like if we pick that definition of right and left-wing, it would apply even less to what we like to calling people like right I don't reasons. see I don't I don't see how Thomas so summarized this like um, it's, it's in this fact it makes a lot of sense when you're thinking about the, the conflict of visions which is actually conflict, the conflict of visions is the landmark book that Thomas Sowell is best known for people <clears throat> right wing academics say it's his best book and it basically says that the left believes that human nature is more malleable and that things can be changed and that the right believes that human nature is fixed more and that we have to live within certain constraints. I think most reasonable people accept that we have to live in, within certain constraints. The question is, do we keep the ones we've got or do we change them? Indeed. And I think like when I'm thinking about the thing that you said, Tennant, actually the thing that I thought didn't make sense about social Darwinism makes a lot of sense in context of the fact that you don't think that my, the definition I gave makes sense, right? Because the social Darwinism comment comes from the thing I said. It is that's why it's a right classified as right wing because social darwinism is an idea that the way things are in the world is the way that they should be right. I, the reason why i think there these uh this definition would be inconsistent is because it implies that When I was, uh, uh, when I lived un under the this, this Soviet regime, when I was very, very little, the conservatives sure. were the left wingers and the progressives were the Democrats that were, that were right wingers. The, 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 the pravi, the, the rights were the party of uh, limited government and libertarian and liberal ideas. And the Soviets were the conservatives in that country. And so to me, a, a political uh, compass has to always point north, always point towards the same direction. It's incredibly confusing to me when the political compass shifts based on who is currently in power. So when the Soviets were in power in my country, okay, that is their ideas yeah. were conserved. Therefore, they were the conservatives. Look, I don't know. I don't know how to explain that to you. I'm just telling you what I understand them to be based on my experience interacting with these ideas. So when progressives win and they and they enact the existing laws and you try to change the laws back towards, let's say, a classical liberal direction compared to progressivism, um, you would be the uh, the party of change and never be the party of preservation. Um, no, I don't think it's as simple as that because I think it's like... 
There's a difference between changing back and changing. Hey, uh, everyone, this is getting bogged down. I'll put a message in the tavern text chat. I think this is going to help everybody. Well, um, I have to recognize what uh, what night what uh, night is what midnight is posting. Like all of these definitions are way better than Wikipedia's, which is obvious. Um, they, they seem to be more nuanced. I've only had time to skim them, but they don't seem to use the same words. And I believe that's sure. what, that's well, that's one of the issues we're having. Uh, sure. Even, yeah. Yeah. For sure. Right but and left wing has many definitions, but but to me, my 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 actually, I don't believe like. Uh, I think Captain Devil actually answered my question, but I I would want people on the other side, um, particularly the ad right, to 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 give me like a clear answer. I don't understand how on the political spectrum, libertarian is followed by fascist. Like look at the the spectrum, look at what I just posted. It'll solve everything. Political triangle will solve everything for you. Your life. No, no, I know yeah. that answer. There is two D. There is a two dimensional political graph where authoritarianism is is the North or south, wherever you place it. In no, 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 no. Look, at the triangle is monumentally superior in explaining that. Triangle Perhaps, graph. but we're not... I, actually... It's not what we're doing. Wait. What you're Kenneth, doing? I have a slight answer. Okay. Right, and I think it's a heuristic, right? And it's something sure. I've personally noticed, and I've also seen... Jesus Christ, my computer's done. Um... Uh, and, it, and it's... Uh, so it's partially heuristic and partially something I've descend from talking to actual fascists because the quickest path the quick the easiest ideology to flip to fascism seems to be libertarianism and that has happened with both online commentators and such and blah 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 and actually i don't know, i don't know if you know rand but this is something that rand and a lot of other fascists that i've spoken to over time have said the ideology they target most and they find easiest to target is libertarianism so there seems to be a pathway through libertarianism to it. Okay. Uh, I, I've heard ident- that before. Incorrectly and, identified. No, I, I've Richard heard it before, Spencer and I would accept that answer as kind of observationary. Sorry, yeah. go ahead. I think, from what I can tell, it's because there are left-wing libertarians and right-wing ones, and right-wing libertarians have the conservative trait already, and it's, it's a very natural argument for a conservative to make. Like, I want to protect what matters to me, which is like my group. I, I have. I want to answer the triangle thing. The reason why. But then there were never actually libertarians in sync. The, the, the reason. Well, why, I think yeah, for sure, maybe, maybe the reason they have that yes. label to begin with is because they're confused, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I, that would be my answer as well. If somebody can shift from libertarian to fascist, I don't understand how their brain works. To me, it's like the opposite side of the spectrum. And well, and and this is why um, why this triangle is kind of is maybe interesting, but I believe it's a segue to a different topic. We can discuss the triangle or some other system, but we have to recognize that in our language and in our daily lives, people use the stupid single dimension, um, you know, system, and that system seems to be highly inconsistent to me at least, because uh, we can explain that step like like Julius did, by saying it just happens, right? It, we observe that it happens, that some libertarians become fascists, okay, or fascists recruit among libertarians. We can explain that possibly, but it doesn't give us an answer. There should be a theoretical answer of why that happens, because and the, the, the left-right dichotomy is a theoretical one. Yeah, uh, like I think, first of all, like you can't say it's inconsistent. It may appear inconsistent, but if it was inconsistent, it wouldn't be in use because the only thing that preserves communicative, uh, like convoys, like the words, is that they're useful. If they're not useful, we don't use them. The reason that um, we use well, it so much. Well, maybe, maybe my utility is exactly like Captain Devil mentioned. If I'm a propagandist and I seek to demonize my political opponents, and, and then especially. Well, if I, I don't have. Dem- yes. I don't have a cynical view of people like that. I do, because you, wait, you, I, you seriously I think that political activists don't change definitions to suit their interests? Are you I, think that, that I, I think I think that they do, but I don't think that it's because they're doing it on purpose. I think that they're genuinely ignorant about the way the world works. Uh, oh, I, I think no, that's a bit I, naive. That's <laughs> I, I, I think that's a bit naive. The Soviet Union 
one of the if as much as the United States invested money into you know space programs, into Star Wars and other things that were technological, sure. like like the spy planes, the same similar amounts of money relatively, the Soviet Union was investing into people, into various political groups, and into propaganda. Sim for example, uh, the the calling of everything that was not Soviet Union as imperialist. The changing of the word imperialist to not, not actually mean what it means. Sure, I'm not saying so the, people are it, never malicious. I, I believe that it was part of this this the idea when, yes, in that when, when fascists wait, when fascists and and so and the Soviet Union existed simultaneously, they had a political benefit on both sides to declare themselves as the uh, far reaches of sure of the black yes. But it doesn't explain how retroactively we still have these terms. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. If everybody, <laughs> if, if everybody, if everybody was born within a paradigm, if everybody drank it with their mother's milk, oh if that's God. what they see from all of their books, and obviously it's what they're going to keep using unless someone questions it. And to question it, you have to spend the same amount of political and propaganda currency that was spent before. What? Oh, no, I want to. I want to. I want to ask this young or guy. Or you could just do, not do you pay actually fucking think, attention. Do you actually think that internationalist communists wouldn't just reframe? Oh you you really think they wouldn't reframe anything that isn't that? As I'm being not evil particularly or not? conspiratorial. Actually, it's no. Not, I I, I have a practice. question. <laughs> No, 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 dude. If if uh, laughter isn't a substitute for evidence, by the way. Um, yeah, pro tip. Sargon hasn't learned that oh, yet. You oh, might. Oh, oh, um, oh, 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 thank you, big brain. Okay, no, please uh, don't do that. Uh, you're you're weakening your argument. He's right. Don't yeah. Um. So it's fine. So be child if you want. Don't care. Um. What the fuck does international communist mean, dude? Because you keep using this buzz phrase, and you're using it in the almost like it, it sounds like an even more conspiratorial version of like so many other things i hear can you actually Wouldn't define it, what you mean by it i'm not going to let you get away with it just, it just means that they believe that there should be a world that communism who, be who believes who when you, individuals wait can, what I, individuals? can i address can i ask questions about this hey Shogo. wouldn't that be the default position last i checked communism mostly regards yeah, the I thought distinction so as well. between, yeah, it's the default position because it's an arco cap and the intention is to spread globally. You actually see this reflected in Russia. But the yeah, point is that, like, in nearly I don't all even disagree, wrong, but it's globalist. I by want default. to know what I'm he wrong. thinks his term means and who and who oh. these terms entail. Like, who, who are the I, I was going to ask him. I was going to ask him. Yeah, I'm going to ask him a related question. I just want to know what a national communist is. <laughs> oh my god, god that's a bit of an oxymoron. <laughs> that's clever. Right. Uh, well, it, fine. Uh, I, I actually, um, maybe you can answer, but I, I linked an article about propaganda in the Soviet Union, and yeah, yeah. I, I can probably provide more research, but I know that there was there were actual political bodies that did not, we don't have analogies in the West, but there were like people whose entire life's work was to analyze how foreign societies work and figure out how to spread the the Soviet propaganda towards them, how to adapt it to them. And their basic one of their main tools was to define to be opposed to anything that they defined as fascist. And you can see the remnants of the same propaganda school right now being used this day by uh, yes. by Russia. I understand. Okay. I understand so, what you're saying, but I think most is... people who are like modern proponents of that don't understand that that's what they're doing. So there, there's like, I think one thing that's really hard about this discussion is just the lost context. A lot of people seem to just hate history when discussing um, politics, right? Fascism is the one of the first synthetic um, political approaches. It doesn't act. It doesn't have, like, say, libertarianism or socialism or communism, a distinct rational core, because it's never designed as such. It does not have a rational core. You can try to analyze it as a political ideology, and I've actually got sources here, proper academic ones, right, that point to the same. You can't analyze it as if it had a core. The left-right distinction itself won't make much sense because it doesn't have a good, clean core. The, the best that anyone can do is to try and outline fascists or 
features of the ideology. Secondarily, it's also its historical situation. In philosophy, around the 1800s, we have the Enlightenment, right? The Enlightenment pushes, um, post-Enlightenment, you accept ideas because they convince you, the individual, not because your king or God say so, right? So there's something anti-hierarchical about it. But what's fascinating is one of the, one of the reactions that follow soon after is propaganda aimed to convince the individual. It would not have been useful in feudal societies, right? Convincing the peasants wasn't useful in a feudal society, but it is useful post um, um, enlightenment with its focus on individuals, right? It's why, it's why it is that nearly every, mo um, every political movement post 1800s starts to appeal to the individual because it should, right? It's the philo philosophical framework in which it sits. Um, but yeah, that's like two things that are like problematic here. Like the left-right left, right distinctions don't work against hybrid type politics. So if you try to categorize Australia, for example, right, they're both socialist and they're libertarian. And it's really hard for you to try and pin that. What happens is that most compasses, this naturally just got to get it pinned to the center. But that's not exactly right either, right? It, it's hard to pin a hybrid because it's both things at once. It's not really one or the other. Um, yeah, what do you guys think of that? But I mean, you can, can see this in the that. sources. Yeah, you see I, this I in the sources. I think with the idea that there are some political ideologies that that just exist, and I think uh, I would I'm interested in finding out what if synthetic is actually supported. If that assertion is supported, I'm sure it has. Yeah, it just it's a curious idea to me that it's synthetic versus like it, a natural it, political ideology. It's it's synthetic as far as we go by the two main. Poster boys for it. Like Mussolini sees it as synthetic of the right and the left. Mussolini actually just describes it as such, right? To him, it is the correct synthesis of. Uh, actually, oh, what Mussolini. Wait, wait, what, wait. You mean synthetic yeah. is synthesizing? Synthesizing, yeah. So, not Mussolini synthetic in particular. Is natural. Sorry. I... No, 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 no. Yeah, no, not like artificial and that, that's what I'm going after. Like, what Mussolini did, right? One of the fascinating things he does, and people seem to ignore him, is he actually looks at the left right spectrum and says, there's something wrong with this categorization. I can do both things. He's like, this is not a dichotomy. I can do it both. Um, is this the third way idea? Yes, this is a third. This is why third positionism is often the same thing as fascism, right? Now, if you're dealing with someone's right wing, they're rarely ever third position, right? Because they're right wing. Uh, most people who are on the right wing don't actually agree to left wing ideas. But if you get someone's third position, like literally, you can get someone who joins the server, name his third position, you almost always know that they're fascist. Right? Because only real, it's only really in the fascist groups that they believe in the synthesis of far right and far left ideas. Notably, third way is actually much more popular, and it's the synthesis of soft left and soft right ideas. Kind of those, the, it's more the middle ground -y position. But third positionism is the synthesis of far ideas. Um, and you see this. Uh, it, they call it national socialism, but it's better termed as national syndicalism, right? So they allowed um, industries, they allowed owners, they allowed capitalists, right? But the validity of those capitalists only exists if they do what the Fuhrer says. And the Fuhrer himself is supposed to be the envoy of the people, right? So you get this weird deal where it's, it's capitalist and it's socialist. It's like I said, that's what they're doing. They're synthesizing, right? You can't land a clean cut on this. If you could, I'd point out that like, if you could, this thing would be easily categorized in at least one of these political books of ideology aimed at like first year students in Paul Sci, but it isn't because no one can actually land a clean cut on the thing. Um, instead, we can just sketch out its features. It's sort of like describing what makes a chair a chair. It's really hard to describe a single point test, but you can describe some of the features and identify them as like a family group of related ideologies or re related political things. But, you, but it's, it's just a mistake. Like, this is a mistake of a debate. Like, people, people try to tar the right as Nazi. They don't get it. Nazis are um, a weirder thing. I, I don't think uh, I, I agree with you that you know with this analysis in and but the, I don't think that it's just not get it. I think it's a very convenient 
intentional. Uh, yep. It's a very convenient thing to have. Um, and one of the reasons why we have it culturally, like people asked, well, how did how did the propaganda campaign, how did all of this supposed that alleged by me international influence of the Soviets, how how did it manifest itself? When one of the the ways it manifests itself is that we never had a bloody trial. In in culture, in our culture, we all we had a trial against Nazism, and we said it's bad, and we understood why it's bad, and it was and those trials were very public. And from then, that moment on, we could like justify even um, suspending freedom of speech, or one of our main values in democratic societies, in order to suppress that ideology, because the trial was a proof that it was absolute evil, and we don't want any more of it. But we don't have a similar trial for any um, extreme position of like the communists we never had a trial of communism really and this is um this is not uncommon history determines the winners and it's quite sad at times right so um like in a much more simpler example i think everyone can agree to right is both um hitler's germany and here hitler's japan were responsible for atrocities of almost equal severity yeah maybe the numbers aren't exactly the same maybe hitler kills more people However, Hirohito was no better a person. Yes. Right? He, he wasn't like, you're not talking like Japan, Japanese at that time were like the good people. Right? They, they were pretty bad. However, history remembers them very differently. You see this reflected mm -hmm. even now, right? So, I don't so know this, what you're talking hmm? Hitler well, well, no, no, history no, we don't. Pretty badly, dude. No, Julius is right. We, we, but I'll explain to, maybe I can meet you in the middle. I understand what, you, what, you, what Julius was going to object. He's going to say, well, we know, everybody knows about the rape of Nanking, and there's a call, and people are quite aware of the atrocities. I mean, uh, but, our, but there our is... own history, like, there's a lot of Australian media and movies and stuff about abuses in the POW camps and exactly the torture techniques and use, and how yes. they, they actually argue that the Japanese torture techniques were the worst in the world used at the time in surpassing what the Nazis, far actually even surpassing what the Nazis did. However, I mean, yes, here's yeah. the difference. So I'm, I'm saying that, I'm saying that in terms of propaganda, right? Uh, I, I, I wanted to complete the thought, that's all. Um, in terms of propaganda, when you label the far right, you don't actually ever see anyone say, you're like Hirohito's Japan. And it's actually like a, it's really weird, but in terms of public consciousness, we are, we are rationally aware that factually they're similar. However, in some kind of weird kind of public consciousness deal, we don't actually consider them the same, right? So if you want to tar the right, you call them Nazis. You don't call them, you don't refer you to them say? being Imperial Japanese, no, right? I, I, can, I can give you an example of how we treat yeah. them differently. Um, it is more common if you see uh, movies about uh, the American war against Japan, that you mm -hmm. see films like um, you know the, the 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 old film with with uh, I think it's Tora 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 with the, with the aircraft carriers and you have Japanese pre represented by the Japanese Navy. It's as if imagine if the entire German army was represented by by the film Das Boot, where you have those spiffy white uniforms and people who don't really like Hitler but just like are doing their job and they're all like these cool submarine guys that are just in a shitty situation and you empathize with them. I get the same feeling from most of the media that portrays Japanese people. It's as if every single Nazi was one of those, um, you know, guys from Inglorious Bastards that that talks slick. But that's not the actual reality of of the Japanese. So you have this caricature of um, that's maybe the anti-Japanese caricatures kind of die out, the crude ones from the actual period of the war. And we remain with the caricature of the noble warrior that wears a sword and talks about honor and has the Bushido code, kind of the from the samurai past. And then at the same time, you know, occasionally you have a documentary about the rapes and the torture and the real things. But in media, you also have the more of the positive portrayals versus if you look at Nazis portraying in the media, it's like it's either a slick, absolute, you know, shitbag of a person and a villain or just an absolute shitbag villain, period. 
Well, those are only white societies. Japan, they demonize Japanese till no end. Japan demonizes Japanese. No, you know, in their China, textbooks, China, right? China demonizes the Japanese. Oh, China. Yeah, I'm, I'm part Chinese. So, yeah, there's, the, uh, there's extra additional hatred for Japanese for me. But yeah. the, Japanese in their, the Japanese in their own media are largely ignorant of their own crimes in a way that Germans are not. Right? They actually mm -hmm. refuse to teach elements of history. And it's like, it's pretty bad. Like, you actually yeah. have Japanese kids being raised yeah. with no awareness yeah. of what their fact. history is. Yeah, fun fact, um, the Rape of Nanking in, Jap in Japan is actually referenced as the Nanking Incident. Yeah, I know. It's yeah. like, <laughs> you know, it's the, it's everyone so else sees it. And, and it's like, I, I look at a soft historical revisionism, right? If you just simply teach the kids something different, it becomes their reality. Because they can't know any better, right? And that's considered acceptable, but not, not flick O to Germany, right? For all of its abuses, Germany is actually quite apologetic. In, in the Soviet and yet, Union... In Russia, there is a very clear example of the soft change that they do in history. It's very mm. simple. In most of the Russian textbooks, what they would try to do is emphasize 1941 and de-emphasize uh, 1939. Uh, sorry, 39. They would not show you, um, you know, a, a Russian soldier and a German soldier shaking hands um, in. I forgot the name, in the, that Polish city where they met in the middle and had a song and dance. They won't show you that. The Patriotic War starts from 41. It doesn't start earlier, even though Russia invaded multiple countries, you know, before that. So there's like a soft way to just kind of brush that aside. And I, and I worry about like historical revisionism because not all of it takes on, I mean, there are some people who intend to do it personally, like, like, they go out and try to actively do it, but then um, there's others who just refuse to teach what happened, right? And it just gets forgotten, dropped. And you can steer things. Like I said, like I really do believe there's differences in perception between the Japanese and Germans, right? Most people don't, aren't even aware. It doesn't seem like people are even aware that the Italians were fa um, fascist at any point in time, right? Um, people aren't aware of um, a lot of history. And they'll, they'll still get into full, um, the, the discussion of political philosophy. However, because they don't have the historical history to ground it, right? The tendency is then to just be like, this movement is just bad. They don't have the history to fill it with any nuance. It's just fascism bad. And the best example of fascism is just Nazi Germany. Well, so you most know people, how stupid right? the average person is, right? <laughs> well... It's, well, it's yeah, like, no, no, think, think about this. Think about this. Seriously, you want, think about this. You want this. to change that? No, no, no seriously, th think about this. Think about this. If we all know how stupid the average person is, that is well, so well, fucking well, condescending. Well, statistically, half of them have oh to be my stupider God. than St that. Actually, statistically, they're okay, average. Okay, that's interesting meme argument. But I was saying that like this. This is like this dovetails into an argument for like good good quality education for kids. But that aside. It's just fascinating. Like, tarring the right as just... Nazi is convenient. It's convenient. <clears throat> most of it's just convenience, right? Um, most, the actual right ring things that at least I deal with when I'm debating, like, if you really want to, like, get them on things that they actually believe, right? Most of them aren't actually fascist. Um, a much bigger group of the right wing are tradcons, right? Get them on Catholicism. It's a much bigger group. Right? Get them on religion. Much bigger group. Yeah? And it's still well, not indicative of the entirety. But, yeah, no, it's not indicative of the entirety because not all right wing people are religious. But hey, these are actually going to get traction in a meaningful sense. Like, they're just not Nazis. You know, I'll, I'll be, I can be a little bit of a devil's advocate because I noticed something that yeah. maybe is omitted. Um, one of the reasons why it's so easy to identify right wings right wing ideology with nazism is because of the declared statements nazis did make many declarative statements that they actually never adhered to but like they declared their absolute social darwinist they declare this idea that they should not that most corporations should be private hands because they justified it by you know the liberation of the people of the you know the racially superior group to be free to do whatever it wants so in propaganda, they do seem to support sort of libertarian ideas. The problem of is that 
that in action none of this materialized. Like very quickly, it was rounded up and thrown in a concentration camp. And in, in a similar way, if you look at early um, early communism in in Russia, for example, it's the liberation of the of the worker. It's the liberation of the person in the field. And then the kulaks all get executed. You know, a few years after yeah. those poor peasants gained their plots of land, the most successful ones, the ones that didn't drink the land away and survived and gave labor to others, they get killed off because you know you can't have. Yeah. And and this this is a, this is a historical thing. You got to situate historically, and it makes sense. Fascism occurs in a context, right? What fascism is up against is the lib- liberalism and the communism of the time. Right? It's why fascism is anti-communist. It must be in order to promote itself. You see this in modern politics. Trump has to be opposed to Hillary in order to play the game. Fascists have to be opposed to communists. That's to say everything it takes to distinguish themselves because it's important to the branding. Right? right. Also, right. they're not just up against they're not just up against communists, right? Around this time, the dominant political form is liberalism, right? The socialists are there, commies are there, but the dominant form is liberalism, right? So what the fascists do is they take a multi-pronged approach. To the liberals of the time, they say, hey, your philosophy is remarkably empty of substance. We have a mythos that you never do, right? Because liberalism's ha- liberalism has a kind of emptiness to it. It's very, it isn't very prescriptive. It's more like a whole series of things of things you shouldn't do, not things you should do. And so the fascists take that on and say, hey, you've got all these things you shouldn't do, but I can also tell you things you should be doing, like, you know, believe in authority. And to the, and to the commies, they say, well, we, we, we see your deal, but you're like enslaved to rationalism. We believe in the spirit of the people. So you have a kind of uh, depravity to you, right? And this, this, this is part of political positioning, right? You must brand your movement differently. You're not going to win... Even if you wanted power, say, just assume for a moment that the fascists are just power-hungry people. They don't actually have much philosophical to them. Just that's in actually, that that's game interesting. Alone, you, you know, when you yeah. mention all of this, Duganism right now is basically using those exact descriptions of liberalism. Du, the, of course, the, they must. The, yeah, the Eurasianism, Duganism, they, they, Duganists, they basically they describe liberals as having no values. Like what? No, but they, that's what they do. They say liberalism pushes you to like a complete dismantlement of everything spiritual and uh, and a complete dismantlement of all definitions. They associate yeah. postmodernism with liberal thought directly, or they try to. It's, ever since the inception of liberalism, the most classic argument against it has been its emptiness, which makes sense. Liberalism is more about what you can't do than it is about what you can do. It is not very prescriptive. It's kind of devoid of content. And so an old argument form, right? Even okay, even before the fascists come along, right? The commies were attacking liberalism. It's how they work, right? In order to attack it, they realize that there is in fact an emptiness to liberalism, right? That's why it is that Marx and many commie writers are very romantic in their writing. Because it's the one it's a one area in which you can just destroy liberals. Liberalism is very unromantic. It's very empty. There's not much to be romantic about, right? There's no mythos of the the poor worker. There's no mythos at all. It's just everyone's roughly equal. They have these rights. Amazing. Like, yeah, what are you going to yeah, say it's, about it's it? It's not putting yep. the collective above the individual, and that's the whole difference between. Them. It's so, but yeah, but in a romantic sense, in terms of like campaigning propaganda inspiring people right liberalism can be very empty because it just doesn't say much right? i think that's historically true but uh, there were there were also i think it's slightly different in the united states in the united states mm-hmm. i would actually think and i would identify certain elements to the to the kind of the history of the founding fathers their various exploits the the story of the squeaky wheel of the hard worker that also you know shows right, that right. he's hard work no... like the frontier sort of spirit of mm. you know being free um and um and like mm-hmm. hard working um this uh, all of this you can say that's not historically accurate that wasn't actually the case but i'm talking about propaganda oh yeah there still is stuff there still are ways to sell liberalism you can look at the heroes of liberalism you can you can still do that but there's less of the sense of um 
liberalism, for example, doesn't draw class distinctions. Because it doesn't, you can't appeal to them, right? There's, there's no, very rarely, um, uh, in liberalism, there's very rarely a small guy versus the big guy. And, you know, a David and Goliath is less common in liberalism. It's, there's less of these stories that are older, right? Um, and that's and this is what I mean by just the the way in which liberalism can be hollow. It's less able sometimes to play to the stories that people love, right? Commie, commies understand this well, and they play the stories. Uh, a lot of um, propaganda for communism does it quite well. Fascists take this further. They understand the role of storytelling in politics to really cynical effect. They focus on it. Right? They don't even. They at some point they just cease to give rational arguments. Most people categorize fascists as anti-rational. They're actually against reason, right? But they're storytellers, right? Now, we we have it's it's normally sounds like we have our own way of doing things. You know, we don't have oh it's uh, you know we don't have to follow the examples that are functioning from past societies because we are are unique people. There's always that story. And yes. we need to do like to figure out our own way around the universe I'm, and therefore follow us because we're spiritually yeah. and the other thing is spiritual superiority mm -hmm. to others. I know. And and this answers an old question. Why is it that um why is it that neo fascists are able to convert liberals? Easy. They're better storytellers. Like the the best arguments for liberals are rational, boring, dry ones. They're logical ones, right? They're boring. Like that's what that's how they're argued for. Because liberals kind of respect reason, yeah. Because they do, they're slaved or stuck with having to just give you rational arguments. They can give you one or two heroes, but they give you rational arguments. How dull! The fascists they don't need to give you rational arguments. They're not about reason. They give you stories, right? They tell you about the impending doom that faces your nation if you don't give all your power to the state and the state doesn't like revive the nation. I was talking to a guy recently who did something like this, right? He's like, look, look, you can have your liberalism, but if you keep going that way, your country is just going to get screwed over. You need to hand your power to the government. The government needs to take over and it needs to take the Australian spirit and impose it on the people. And I'm like, yeah, no. But it is a wonderful story. It's got much more emotion to it much more exciting i think one of the reasons why this is happening is simply uh, like history but if you if i look in the past i look at some of our media some of the media is fairly inspirational that comes from people with a clearly liberal mindset i will give you one example the the two historical series the 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 remake and the original series of cosmos that series was infused to the core with a type of um, liberal thinking or even like uh, libertarian in some sense. Uh, it was uh, the idea of, um, you know, speaking about the origins of democracy and describing how, uh, you know, the value of these uh, ship owners and individuals with mobility uh, basically imposing their will on the government because they could, ever, they could always leave. The stories of scientific discoveries being made by these people that then influence and better the planet. Um, the idea of being one with the universe and the various, yeah. you know, the poetry of it. There are attempts to identify they, they, the spirituality of that. There are attempts, but there's it's like a there's a there's some like subtle uh, patterns in each um, political ideology, right? One of the things about liberalism is liberalism is predicated on individuality, right? So when we have heroes in a liberal economy, we don't say, like, for example, um, maybe not the world's best example, but take Einstein, right? We don't say Einstein succeeded because of the people. We say Einstein succeeded because he did his own thing, right? So we allow people to own their achievements. And you must in, in any any kind of individualistic setup. You allow people to own their own achievements. Yeah. Uh, the converse of this, the other side of the coin, though, is that there's no um, grand story about how being a collective is the good thing. Instead, so we focus on individuals being the good thing. Does that make sense? So, like, it, you it have makes sense. I actually, I can give you an example. Yeah. Just today, I watched um, the um, Russia created uh, a recent film 
based on the story of the first um, uh, spacewalk. And mm-hmm. the, there were, I, I watched uh, a guy review the film, and he made a lot of great points about historical inconsistencies. But one thing I couldn't understand, he kept pushing for the idea that because the film was bad, it was anti-Soviet. And then at the end of the review, he says this thing. The one thing that the filmmakers omitted is the idea that the achievement of all of these individuals was the achievement of the Soviet people. And that was yes. gravely missing. And to me, it was like, I don't need that. But apparently, the, you know, the, the maker of the video really needs that collective um, ownership of the achievement of that you know, group of scientists and yeah. brave uh, pilots. <laughs> so to some degree, you can see this as a function of how collectivistic or how individualistic the philosophy is, right? The more individualistic it is, the less the state owns the achievement, right? So, um, or less the people own the achievement, right? Like the achievement of a sports person is theirs and theirs alone. The achievement of your thinkers is theirs and theirs alone, right? So it's, it's Einstein has succeeded. Whereas in more communistic setups, more socialistic setups, and more collectivistic fundamentally setups, it's not yeah, about the collective that person. Is more sacred than the individual. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a collective that succeeded, right? So it'd well, be like. Did, um, have you looked at? Did you look at the triangle I posted? I did. I did. I, I don't mind it. Cool. I don't mind it because at least there's one thing that I like to point out to people is that whatever you're doing, fascism just doesn't sit well in the left-right dichotomy. If in and, and there's so many ways to point this out, right? If it did academics would happily jump at it. It would just solve a, a, a small area of major content, uh, discontent, right? I'm sorry, what but do you also, mean it doesn't, doesn't make sense? Because it, it's fascism is just simply total, more totalitarian and more collective. It and doesn't fit well. I'm saying it doesn't fit well on a left-right dichotomy. Well, well, it, I, I, I can explain to you why. Like, and, yeah. and I did this, sorry, uh, let me interject. I did this briefly earlier in the discussion. Maybe you missed it, Captain. But there is a point, if somebody can make a valid point, can make a valid attack from the left and say, hey, there was a lot of, you know, individualist kind of promoting the power of the individual within fascist regimes. They did um, try to use that as part of their propaganda initially. It's fine. Like, we know that in reality that wasn't the case. It was never fully implemented that way. Maybe it wasn't even fully intentioned that way. But they used that propaganda they used a sort of right direction propaganda or right wing propaganda, which is they would say, if you join us, you will be able to self fulfill your full potential as an individual. That's part of the of the ideology they're pushing. And so I, I think yeah, that isn't isn't that just tied with the power of the collective and the greatness of the collective and that we will all work not necessarily. Together. And that's the point. They're doing collective things, which makes you right, your assertion side of the assertion right. And it's, but they're also doing things that would would be looked at as shifts towards the right. Um, partly explained historically, but partly explained because they're trying to appeal to both sides politically. Yeah, it, well, it, it, yeah. It, it does. It does make sense though if you think, well, the you have all your individual power to do what you want because the state will create the environment where you are free to do that, and you are away from quote parasites or things of that nature. Yeah, sure. That's well, that's like a that's an old debate, right? So one of the points of communism, and this is just your mileage may vary. Some people argue that in communism, people have the most freedom because they equally treated by the state right there's no unjust imbalance therefore you have maximum freedom libertarians would disagree liberals would disagree libertarians would say while it's true that a guillotine (laughs) is a very nice cure for dandruff it's also quite a deadly medication (laughs) (laughs) yeah sure but like it's it depends this is partly depend what you call freedom right so if you say freedom is that i am in the same condition as everyone else Communism delivers the goods. You are in the same condition as everyone else because you all get what you need and equal. Yeah, that's it. You're in the same right, condition. But the free, However, but, the, but the core flaw just with that basic premise is that in order for that collective equality it requires a trampling of individualism. Yeah, so I mean, it's like a weird deal. So it's... And this is a case of a political trichotomy. If you're a more, if you believe the individual is sovereign, 
It's going more to the top. If you believe uh, Darwin, it's collectivism, which is the totalitarianism, well, you're more to the bottom. The only... The, in- the problem oh, sorry, is... Try- so, yeah, yeah, you go. I was, oh. I was trying to find the source of the fucking political... Tri- and I'd love to see the source of it. Because one of the it's only things... It's called trichotomy. Managed- it, it doesn't come up if you put triangle in there. One of the only things I found was... Uh, are bad politics where they were shitting on it and exactly how it's wrong, wrong and how it doesn't really represent stuff properly and how it cuts a lot of political ideas out of it. Right, it so one, one of the issues is going to be, one of the issues is immediately going to be that anarcho-communism, like that particular ideological school... That's actually one of the <laughs> immediate criticisms. I, I don't know, it's because... Going to to... Sit, it's going to sit really weirdly here because it's actually going to sit near what? anarcho-capitalism. C- can you explain share... to me? Why is anarcho-communism coherent? I don't. I'm it's not going to say that it is. I'm not going to say that it is because I I don't think it is. But there are people who believe. There are people who believe that. Um, the the trick to the anarcho anythings is that they first establish anarchy and then people naturally gravitate towards this or that system, right? So an anarcho-communist is a kind of anarchist who believes that when we have an anarchy they naturally and spontaneously settle into a communistic setup, right? So people, people, when you have an anarchy, right, people will gravitate to a classless, moneyless society. Yeah, yeah and I, 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 right, but by default, I kind of understand it, but it, it can't work in reality. It's a theory. That, it never that's the contention. It's not reality. in reality. It's, it's, it, when you start asking questions, well, what if I want to sell part of my surplus or not sell, I should use the right. different words. So, what if I want to trade <laughs> part of my surplus to another person for part of his surplus? I always... So, <laughs> there's nobody... Like, if there's enforcement, it's not anarcho. And if so, there's no enforcement, yeah, they're, it's they're, not communist. Their answer, their answer is simple. The answer is really simple, and I've actually really upset. I don't know if you guys have met Suleiman. Oh, he might go by a different name. I've really upset him on this one, because it was yes. just funny. Um, he says... What you need to understand is this is how people fundamentally are. This is the truth about humanity. The truth is, when there is no state, we are all commies. Fixed. Like, as in, this is what we are. Anything else is just lying to ourselves. We can deceive ourselves into thinking that we want to trade, but we don't. Like, that's, that's the conception that you find in anarcho-commies, is that that's speaking to what human nature fundamentally is, and then they say all else is deception. So if you, if you try and pose the idea, what if I want to trade? They're like, you're just an idiot. You don't actually want to trade. You misunderstand your own situation. If you were to uh, reflect and introspect, you'd realize that what you really want is to be in a commune, because that is what humanity, that's, the, like, that's what human nature is. And this happens with anarcho-capitalists as well. Anarcho-capitalists take the opposite end of this. They say, what human beings naturally are is self-interested. So you have an anarchy, right? That anarchy will always reform itself into a market because this is what this is the truth of humanity. And so these groups hate each other because they they're polar opposites, right? They're both anarchists, but they really hate each other because one group says human nature is cooperative, and the other says human nature is self-interested, right? And they don't gel. It's very hard to gel those two. Um, and so this is how they don't have a state. They don't need one. This, the, the, um, what, how, so I would say the structure is inherent to what we are. Like, you, you don't need a state to do it. I don't that's know how, why that's how it say, works. Com- I don't know why you didn't say competitive there, after cooperative. Oh, yeah. Competitive might have been better, but... It, Usually, Ank has a more like self interest. I, I realized that like midway. I'm just like, I want to say competitive, but it's more self interest because they, they can. Ankaps honestly believe, like, so if you look them in the eye, they dead on believe that people wouldn't necessarily um, follow like little militias and start killing each other. They actually believe that self interest results in this system that is stable. Right, so um, say like companies start filling in potholes and building roads, and, yeah, but, and paying um, insurance and so on. I think that's right? actually described by competition because competition is like it's still it's you're it's, they're still hostile, but there's rules. You know what I mean? It's cooperative competition. So the problem is it gets oxymoronic, yeah, exactly. right? So yeah, sure. Sure. Mac is here's, here's the, the funny part: cooperative. You can actually test these things. You can probably test these things in scientifically by 
having an experiment involving very, very small children that are not yet under the influence of some particular culture. Or if, so, you, can, if you can make the experiment culturally neutral. And here's what I would predict. If, if I were to search for such experiments, I would probably mm-hmm. find both types of behavior as a result. Yes. Both selfish and cooperative. <laughs> Yes, and and I and I do believe that we've already tested these ideas, right? So all of anarchism is predicated on this weird ignorance of history. This has already been done. Every, every human society that existed didn't have a state prior to its existence, right? And humans on a plane, and they self-organized. They self-organized not just in Australia, but they actually self-organized over multiple continents, right? So not only not this... only humans, but monkeys, yeah. primates. Yeah. Uh, our cousins, uh, Neanderthals, Homo erectus. Yeah, we, we uh, see this in. Yeah, we see. Yeah, we see similar structures, not just in humanity. You see it in you see it in primates. You see it in dolphins. All of them form up structured societies. They they don't actually stay all that anarchic. Yeah. So I, I find it like just they're both groups assumptions. Just all anarchy to be like. Well, because to believe in that, in that, you need to believe that human nature isn't um, such a constraining factor that it would lead to structural hierarchies. Yes, they don't believe it to be innate. This is why I'm like libertarian, liberal, not anarchic, because my my approach is different. It looks similar, but it's different. I say freedom from the state is a good thing. I still like it, right? If, If a state isn't necessary for something, remove it. It's cool. But um, we'll just be a like, hmm? I don't know. I think the th- the thing is that, like, I don't think that anarchists or people who call themselves anarcho, I don't think they do think that it's not innate. What I think is they're like focusing on the the state of anarchy as like transformative, right? They're thinking of it like as like a way to evolve society because out of the deconstruction of what we've got. Maybe we could make something better, so, and then they idealize what they're trying okay. to make. So I I call that, and I don't think that's anarchy. I call that push button anarchy. So I've I've had that occur. It's funny enough the fascists who believe strongly in this, right? The idea is you transiently just just demolish the state, like you literally go over to the White House, bomb it down, right? And what they believe is that people will not only spontaneously organize, they'll spontaneously organize into a fascistic state. Right, they like they're fascinating because they they are, as the meme goes, anarcho fascists. But Sorry. the anarchy is push button. It's like if I press it on this country, like if this country loses its state, it'll reorganize into a feudal society. Then that feudal society will convert into a fascist. Accelerationist, state. yes. So I, yes, I, I do have to ask something because I have been trying, mm. on the side of doing a couple other things, I've been trying to research this. Mm. What? support within anything of political science does the trichotomy the thing have because oh. <laughs> I googled it with the word trichotomy and all I could find was Reddit posts again making fun of it. It's all I can find. There doesn't ah. seem to be actually be a source for it. Any is there any kind of academic source you can provide to give it any kind of legitimacy? The, no idea. That it's not just so it could just be from fucking poll for all I know, right? Well, it, no, no, I, it I, absolutely I, I really, makes more sense than a lot no, of the no, that, that's just on your personal science. induction. That is your personal Indeed. induction. No, that's not any kind of claim. We'll, we'll to try it. to provide it's, evidence. The political for the political. No, I have no. It's it's his thing. If he's going to source a thing, he should provide the evidence. When you yeah, provide you something, provide. you don't just provide an independent. <laughs> you guys can do it out. I don't give a shit. Right, I'm. No, no, dude. Like, you're going to stop and fucking listen. When you actually... I'm going to explain how you provide evidence. When you provide evidence, you don't just sh- share the like the image macro. You fucking actually provide the link and actually provide the source where it's from. Otherwise, it's not actually acceptable evidence. And I'm just going to dismiss this as a poll meme because I can. Because that is just as a reasonable claim as you saying that it makes sense. So it's, it's, just, it's just poll shit posting. I have to do it so you don't like it. And no, that's it. No, 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 wait. Because wait, all Julius, you're saying wait, is you Julius, like it. Julius, I don't care wait, about your fucking Julius, feelings. Julius, wait, wait. What? I, I, I'll try to explain it in a more, in a kinder, more optimistic fashion. The reason why Julius is upset, not upset, sorry, is being hard on you, um, is because 
it is part of your responsibility to actually bring something to the table, meaning it's it's like work. You have to do the work because but what, this is premise on the claim that I said is absolutely true. I just said no, 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 it's not. No, no, no. Wait, it's no, not it's just. Not. It's not just that on that premise. When you bring an idea to the table, and especially when you have a nice, serious discussion, every time I say something, the, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, how am I going to support this? Or I have an actual already argument in mind, uh, sorry, article in mind to post in support of my assertion. At least a Wikipedia article is like the m basic level. Why? Because my intention is to add value. And part of that value is that somebody can go and not trust me without me being present, verify what I said. Okay. okay. And so we want that value to increase. Therefore, we quite selfishly or collectively, I don't know, demand that from everybody participating. It's kind of like we have a party. Did you bring, you know, a drink? If you haven't, you're kind of mooching off of it. So that's, right. that's yeah, that, and uh, the point. But the point is that we can't just put something in the chat and then talk. Well, about no, it's it. it's not even that. But like, and this is something separate from the Discord server, right? So separate from the Discord server, via logic, reason, anything, right? Nowhere would consider that acceptable evidence, and it's not about being an absolute claim. No, inserting the word "absolute" into a sentence in terms of truth claims is facile. If, if you're yeah. presenting it as evidence for anything and you're saying, I think this is better, you need to provide evidence. Why? It needs some kind of, I need to know its source. I need to know why it's supposed to be better. Other than, I don't, all you're saying is, I feel that this is better. To me, it seems better. No, because I of my think feelings. it's better. Why? Okay, so, um, because you also don't like hit and runs and we don't like yeah. personal opinions because, because they're kind of a waste of time. We want, we want you to be right. We want you to be able to sh to show, um, you know, political uh, to show the evidence because that would be like value, and and also because hit and runs are really bad. Like it, it's they're really bad for actual discussion. They're, they're they can be but fun. But when we're in you know? talking about it, that was the see. I was not informed that. I needed to have academic scholarly evidence. I thought no, we you just need. I just want to know where it comes from, dude. Listen, you need to have some sort of justification. Also, Julius, what you mean is that it's based on his intuition, not based on his feelings. I so said insulting. induction. I actually said I based. Okay. Yeah, no, so, but you also I said feelings said when you mean the no. But the other thing is, you say feelings. You mean intuition. I found the source. I think I found the source. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> while I'm talking to you, insane. I'm doing work. Here's how far I was. Work. I found a fucking blog. I was uh, saying feelings because I was mocking him. Okay, no, I know, but I don't. I think oh, what you should say is the family name. Wait, wait, say, guys, I found it. I think what you should say is intuition because Could it you includes the mockery without being personal. So um, I, I, I don't know if this actually links to the source, but this is somebody discusses it. Seems to be in a serious non-meme article. So maybe he has the source. So. Um, Yeah, I, I don't even know what the source for this is. This was given to me by. That's someone. really bad, man. You you gotta you gotta, <laughs> you, you, you gotta <laughs> do hold it. on, wait, wait, wait. So why why is it that we, as human beings we don't have the ability to think this through? Because I've thought this through, and to me, it's the best model that I've come across. Because you haven't checked it against no, 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 anyone no, no, wait, or wait, anything wait, wait, else. No, it's very simple. You thought that you were not the arbiter no, of truth. Wait, wait, you can no wait. You can be the source for. I, I did. I'll disagree with him. You can be, but here's what we need. We would need a PDF where you outline your thinking process with a chain of reason, of arguments, referencing either other reason or um, referencing things that we both agree on. So we agree that logic exists and other presuppositions, and you use those presuppositions to build your argument. I take this argument home, I come back a week later, and we have a nice debate over that. You can't just say I thought that through. You understand the difference? Tenant knows. Oh, also. I was not. Uh, no one informed me that I need to have a scholarly article prepared to. Well, oh, well. Jesus you Christ. don't. Okay. Wait, for the last fucking time, you don't need a scholarly article. Remember? You need to be able to explain your reasoning. Simple as that. Okay. Which you so, have. Which we did. <laughs> no, you haven't. No, you just said it seems not. true to me. You, you have it's not, and it's, and it's not it's actually not and and yes, nobody informed you that there was a social contract in this channel during debates. Yeah. But now you know, Nine. and now Nine. you know. Actually, to be clear, like it's pretty much in the rules.
Yeah. Oh, uh, you know, I, I run a but cat captain. I, I can more explain it without like difference to rules, right? In any given conversation, your goal is to persuade, right? You're trying to persuade. You can kind of think Actually, of that. I being... posted. That I didn't post that to persuade everyone to it. I posted that to help another guy's thinking. I said this might clarify some. Things. Yeah. Okay. Tell me what um, you said. This necessarily... was not posted as a model for, of ab, of ninety nine. Oh no. Okay. That's not what I'm. Political... That's not what I'm after. That's not what I'm after. Okay. So what I'm saying is this, right? For any idea you, that you share in any discussion server, right? You're, share, you're sharing an idea and you mean it sincerely. So it excludes trolling. Right. Um, what happens is that each of us has a slightly different bar for being convinced. One of those bars, the low bar, is plausibility. Right. Idea is plausible. I'll consider it. A slightly higher bar that you see on debate servers is that you give a an argument for it. An even higher bar. Uh, one this was I literally possess. posted because we were talking about fascism. I know. The difference I know. Between fascism I'm not. And communism I'm and not I was asking angry. What do you, you think the differences are? And I posted this because I said it may help you in figuring out. Yeah, I know. I remember you saying that. I remember you saying that. It's just that Julius disagrees with it, and maybe he's just curious about okay, where it comes from. So that's why I like that. the source. <laughs> okay. I'm yeah, not saying I don't know what the speak. source is, fellas. But that's the thing. If you're yeah, using all, a thing, right? if you're so, using it, and you don't even know its source, I really question you. It's I, I, okay. I question it's how you discern things. Okay. Right. Any, anyhow, it's just like it's a discussion server. People are here to like share their ideas and whatever, right? So if you share something, someone eventually is going to be like, hey, where did you get that idea from? Because they're curious about it for whatever reason. They're just curious about it, right? And so if your answer is like, I don't know, then it, it's just frustrating, right? We don't need to dip into the philosophy. It's just frustrating. I didn't say that. No, I said this is where someone gave it to me. Someone gave it to me. I don't know its original origins, but I thought this through. Yeah. I think it makes sense, sense to me um, based on the hundreds of anyhow, books I've read. We, Makes sense to me. Did yeah, okay. That's okay. I keep giving. I give you this argument. Funnily enough, I take it to InSync as well. Often, right? Your degree of reading and what you find convincing doesn't really count as a metric for other people. Okay. Right? So you you could be like, I read a thousand books on the matter, and this is what I now believe. That statement there. Isn't very no, but I didn't in say that. Itself. Again, this is on the premise that I put this. I put this in because someone was arguing. You guys were arguing over. Yeah, yeah. I, that, I you that, just. I started. I started it, so that's fair. We were talking about difference yeah. between communism and fascism. I said this may help you. Wait, you wait, know, wait. To be clear, wait. To be clear, um, Tanner did say that he was confused about the dichotomy between left and right. Yeah, uh, this is fine. No, no, you can no, just no, move no, on. No, no, I, I want to discuss it. Wait, 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 wait. I'll clarify. Because that's not what I said. That's not. It's not. That's not sure. exactly true. I said that I believe that the left-right dichotomy had an obvious inconsistency when it deals with fascism, because it places on the far right. And I used arguments to support the assertion. I did not All say right, that we have. And, and, my apologies. And, yes, the reason why I didn't want to discuss this triangle is because I didn't care the fact. I know that there are better systems to describe this situation. I'm well aware of this triangle before he even posted it. Actually, I saw it like a dozen times before that. I don't know where it's from. One of the reasons. Let me let me give you another reason not to do st stuff like that. You don't want to post stuff without a source. Well, let's say that somebody sends you a meme, right? If somebody sends me a meme that even has sources written down on it, and and I know that person in real life. Like, I can physically touch them at some point in, in my life, right? And they give me a source, and I then verify that source, and the source is false, and the meme is actually false. So they spread propaganda to me. I will have a very hard talk with that person, and depending on the answer, they might never speak to me again. Because I believe it's, it's a very dangerous thing. Our mind is easily filled with garbage. And if somebody who's friendly to you, who's supposed to be your friend doesn't provide hold, hold you with on, like... I don't mean to be rude to interrupt, but literally, if you look at this, you can reason out, okay, it makes sense because the difference between fascism is more Darwinistic versus communist, which is more competition is cruel. Let's help no, everybody, I don't, make everybody equal. I don't, I don't think it does make sense because it leaves off several political ideologies. Okay, you disagree. It, in, in fact, it, it, it cuts out entire political ideologies, right? It goes... We want to make a nice shape, and we want it to fit this our our concepts. They've got a concept, and they're trying to make the world fit their concept instead of making the concept fit 
fit the world. Like, instead of, instead of accurately describing reality, they're just trying to force reality to what they think it is. I, I don't, uh, know, I don't okay. actually know if that's the case, but here's the problem with what, he, with what Julius just said. What, what do you think of this Maybe, one that I posted in Wait, wait, wait. Just, just before we go to another one, here's the thing. Julius kind of asserts that this is the case. I assert this may be the case. I agree. I with think Julius. that it is the case. No, I'm not you, you, it no I understand. Point. I, I want to make it. In my opinion, people are. That's a tendency that people have. Back when uh, society was built around the industrialization and early industrialization and a bunch of like machines and mechanical stuff, people used to think about things in mechanical terms. Now we think about things in terms of computers and computer science. It's a natural tendency of people to fit the world around concepts they understand. And we understand the, pon the concept of a line, a square, a triangle, a circle. We try to fit um, if, like real things into these perfect forms. And I believe that while it's not a guarantee that it's fallacious, there, it poses a high risk. Okay, so it's an incomplete model. <laughs> Fellas, can you please... I, I don't even know why you guys are upset. Were you guys, were you guys talking about this for we're like half We're not actually hour upset, something? dude. We're not actually upset. We're not upset. Like, if you this think is I'm a, actually believe, upset like this. It's an, it's an educational moment, and we're trying to justify <clears throat> why there is a requirement for um, for providing okay, a good Why was this not said half... Why is it that someone just comes into the chat and all of a sudden... This is now the topic. I haven't just come into the chat, dude. I've been listening for ages. And while I've been listening, I was trying to do research on finding where this... And it, and it comes from some guy, in, one academic dude in Brazil. I don't know. Cool. No, okay, look. Um, this, this is like... I, I'd love to discuss this. It's actually fun in and of its own right, yeah? No, no, the, I, the I, underlying, I, I, sorry, go ahead. The underlying theory is itself useful and i can get i can get you the actual sources for this right so it's this this is an article full text actually published and so on that attempts to map a um, map in six categories rather than a dichotomy right so this is a six-fold distinction though in the body of the text we actually find the axis used on your triangle give me a second it's, it's just, just neat I, I I would also accept something like the um, the blog post I linked because as I started brow like skimming through it, it actually provides arguments why this might be the case, and because the blog poster seems to be smart, they're using the word might like they don't actually assert that this is true. They're fairly so, safe. I, I just wanted to point you to these little diagrams, right? And what what the guy has done is he's taken the pre axial model of the thing. So it's like um, harm group purity, right? That's that's one way to do it. Uh, but I think no, no, he's used the hierarchical model. So he's given two of the points of a triangle are harm and fairness, and then the others are binding, and that's how he's grouped it. He could have named it such; it would have been better. But it's not awful in that it fits this. It's awful in that in the body of the text we find that uh, what's happening with different political schools is that uh, it's not a good it's not a strong dichotomy so conservatives are apparently sensitive to all five libertarians are focused on fairness liberals are broader right so the, the scope of each school is actually what's changing not so much sensitive to each thing it's scope Conservatives are sensitive to all values. And I've actually seen other studies that back this, right? So conservatives are more broadly sensitive. They evaluate over more categories. Um, whereas uh, other schools are more focused in their nature. So li li liberals, libertarians are much more focused on liberty as a value or fairness as, it's, as a metric. Um, socialistic schools are more focused on harm and harm avoidance. Right, so it does, if if you if you actually like look at Hade's model and you use it, right, what you would be saying is that each of these schools actually deal with a different number of values. The conservatives deal with the most, and then every other school deals with less and less. This doesn't say anything prescriptive; it's just a descriptive thing. Maybe dealing with so many values is actually wrong because some of these values are are dumb, like or bad, 
whatever, right? Like, you know, why should we value in-group? Why should we value purity, for example? So maybe, so this is like a, this is a different argument. It's like, do conservatives value correct things? Do they value wrong things? Do liberals value too little? That kind of deal. Um, let me see. Mm -hmm. But so, no, this does go somewhere. This does go somewhere. Um, I'll link you the wiki bit because that's like easier for everyone to understand. Uh, and this, um, this by the way, Julius relates to your stuff on the development of what? morality. Relates to your stuff on the development of morality. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, this is also an attempt to be developmental. I don't think it's as... Wait, is that um... the same height? Is that the, the, more, the current height that's popular right now? I think so. Let me check. Is this Jonathan Height? This Jonathan Height. Yeah, this is Jonathan Height. Oh, now I'm super interested. I like the guy. Yeah, he's an actual living guy studying this stuff. And he's written about this a fair bit. Um... And he's, he's, yeah, that, that second, what I've quoted here is, is, is one of his key papers. He's, he's made two. The pragmatic validity of moral pluralism. Incidentally, I'm a moral pluralist, so I'm happy with the first paper. And the second is mapping the moral domain. Um, and I'm so, gonna, um, sorry. no, no, go ahead. I'm, I'm going to link the, the video, but I, I'm going to bracket it out. You can click and, and watch later on if you haven't. That's my introduction to height through that talk. Very nice huh. talk. So, I don't know. This this has meat to it. It's just that it took a bit of digging. That's all. So, anything you post, you I need think, to post to be clear, the blo a blog <clears throat> yeah, or a PDF or come an on. academic come on. That's not what I'm... I'm saying Listen. the source... When, okay, so do you understand the difference? Like, this is so illustrative. Right, so like, when we're sharing something that's orthodox, it's already oh known, God. right? So if I post a political compass, no, because that's already the orthodox wait, like, thing that everyone's just, just going wait. to recognize. It's, it's a much better argument. Like, So like, how at this point could you fucking say that, right? Because at this point, Midnight's gone and done your work for you, and now he showed us the thing you showed us to begin with is not as ridiculous as we thought it was, so now we're like, oh, actually, it could actually have some sort of backing, and you're like, so wait a minute, I still have to do that stupid thing of providing a sort. If you provided it to begin with, you wouldn't have been ridiculed. That wasn't. Uh, I assure you, I'm not feeling ridiculed. And well, you were ridiculed. <laughs> you were ridiculed. You were ridiculed. Oh, I'm telling you, as you a matter it. of fact. Right. Uh -huh. All right, dude. Jesus Christ! In sync. I'm just gonna say this is why I fucking. Wait, wait, wait. The, yeah, the thing, it, it, no, the, the thing uh, is, it's it's. You can say. Please tell me. At least tell me you're from the East Coast, so I don't have to share a state with you. <laughs> you guys are crazy. Well, I mean, if he is, then I, 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 well, from the Coast, right? I don't actually. So the, 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 the problem with this conversation is that uh, you can't like this is an educational moment. And uh, I, I, I believe if I'm not mistaken, that you're new to this community, right? First time. Exactly. And so I wouldn't be as necessarily as rough as Julius has been right now uh, yes. or, or instinct. But but the, I, I do believe that the, they have the truth of the matter is that. And it's and I don't need to demean you to 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 like Tenet, teach a lesson. The problem is, is based on his accent, I'm detecting that he's a local, and I'm going to be a lot less friendly to locals because I have to share a country with them. Oh, oh, oh! Your personal feelings are hurt. Because oh, yes, I, drop at the bombs. No, oh. it's the fact that I have to share a country with these people, so I'm going to be way more harsh. I expect yes, better. but 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 no, there's no, the problem is that it's not about your feeling. No, no, because we, we have a politically engaged no nation. Well, no, okay, Kenneth, um, we have a politically engaged nation. We have a lot of sources out there. We, ha I we think, have one I of think the best Kenneth's politically engaged nations on earth. This isn't a good way to educate, and I think that's probably true. Even I though he's being care. very annoying. Okay, it doesn't matter to me. Like none of that matters. But you know, like, Captain Devil, are you from the East Coast? Don't have to answer that question. He doesn't have to. I just want to know. I just don't want to share a story. What, what do the Americans say? I'll take the fifth. 
Dude, I know, like, okay. that accent is distinctly Australian. I don't, and you sound, and I'm, I'm oh, not I'm sure. Oh, Australian. Exactly. Yeah, no. Of course he's Australian, dude. Yeah, just the way he said Australian, Australian was. Uh, like, tell dude. me you're not from West Australia, fucking please. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. I don't think it matters, Julius. It does Anyhow, to me. Um, Julius it's inter- what's, is too angry. What's interesting I'm to me, so um, Captain Devil, right, is that I've actually been advocating for a while now that the Spectra kind of like these don't work too well. And interestingly enough, in the introduction to Moral Foundation theory by Habe, we actually see this. Um, the original, the original focus was on cultural differences, right? And it's moved to political ideologies as families, which is what I've been arguing. I, I believe that these things are like ideological family groups or like yes. a tree. Um, so someone can subscribe to libertarianism, and then they can subs- go and subscribe to something else, and they can do that, and they have the, they have different core values. That's only if, though, I guess all of that's predicated on whether someone's political identity is rational if it is that's rational, actually then why it has a structure right? that's actually why midnight i distinctly think things like politiscales represent these kind of um families they're kind of like these proto families i guess more than like left right uh dichotomy right they do i think what politi- political scales over oh, all of politics right my like i feel like a leading question for me is is firstly your political belief rational? If and only if it's rational, then we can discuss it, analyze it as if it were rational. Hey, Julia. So, what? An interesting one for you, right? So, like, if political ideologies are families, right? Is that what you were saying, Midnight? I think so. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, right? yeah. I'm happy to Families are related. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. But, like, what that, what, <clears throat> if this speaks to something that you told me before that you think is really stupid, right? Jordan Peterson says something about identity politics being similar to Marxism. And I think it's in the family that it's similar because some of the ideas overlap hmm. in a way that is the same. No, I think yeah. he's conflating <laughs> a bunch of things together that aren't related. Wait, I don't, think, on, wait, 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 wait. I don't it, think so. The, the comparison between identity politics and, and Marxism that's that's fine. I mean, Marxism that is, is heavily concerned. With. It's it's postmodernism and identity politics. That yeah, that's the makes no sense. They oh no, no that it. makes perfect sense. Wait, no, wait, it doesn't. Wait, 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 it does. wait, Jordan Peterson is often misquoted on this. Every time he mentions those two terms, he says that that he's based and he's basing it not on his on himself. He's quoting Height and he's quoting others. Who explain why th- these two self-contradicting terms live side by side in politics? Mm-hmm. It is true that people can subscribe both to postmodernism and to uh-huh. Marxism at the same time because people can be wrong. People can subscribe to things that are opposed to each other because they subscribe to them because of different feelings that those group, mm-hmm. that those identities support. They yeah. they have sp- skepticism, therefore they're postmodernist. They have uh, they have they they like the idea of equality, therefore they're Marxist. And um, they they're, the idea that um, there are they like the idea of classes, but modern history does not support the idea of the bourgeois existing or the idea of of the working class existing. And so they refer to racial cla- classification groups instead of uh, instead of class um you know the class groups or well, classes so, of victimization yes classes of victimization exactly so there is there is a historical reason why they shifted positions they don't have to have a consistent position jordan peterson as if you notice the quotes every single time he says these people believe in these conflicting ideas yeah he literally that's what i said to julius is that he literally in the stuff you've quoted points out the fact that they're contradictory and you Do think we that's have a criticism to have this of him. argument again. You think that's a criticism of him when literally he's saying what you said yeah. as well. There is another American professor, um, also I believe. I don't think it's height. It's, there's another guy that wrote a book about postmodernism and Marxism, and he has. There's a long lecture of him on YouTube that I can link, where he explains this historical context, explains it one person at a time, quotes. You know, it's fairly exhaustive. I think he gets a lot of flack. But I haven't seen an actual rebuttal so far on YouTube, which is really weird for me. Like, many people just, you know, throw a pejorative at him um, and his book. Are you talking about Stephen Hicks? Yes, Hicks. Yes. Yeah, that 
that book's pretty bad. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, Wait, that's a fine um, assertion. You know, I like the assertion. Provide me with a book so, that's that so debunks I, it from to from after. So on the first four pages, I believe he miss it like um, he misattributes uh, two quotes: one to Foucault and one to Hitler, uh, which they never said. Um, it's been a while since I looked into this, but let me see if I can find. No, 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 no. He, he, here's the problem. I, 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 uh, I haven't read the book. I've only watched the lecture, and unfortunately, okay. that's, that, that's the reality of it. Um, he also describes Kant as like, um, an anti-reason. Uh, I don't know. His his characterization of Kant in that book is like really bizarre as well. Um, hang on. No, no you don't understand the, the bar that I've set, and and I'll try to repeat it. I he wrote he made a lecture that's like um, has a twenty minute version where he makes the the brief somebody made an excerpt of his explanation for the for Marxist and postmodernist for this weird marriage of why it happened historically. There's a twenty minute video of that. I need to see a debunk that it's sleep that. Okay, I have not seen this lecture. Or, um, or I the found... lecture, and, and the problem is, it has to be a full debunk. Because one, so, because there's a have, there's a debunk of his book um, that I've just posted. This is a pretty excellent. damning condemnation. Where yeah, he cites specific quotes from uh, both the philosophers this this person is talking about and the book itself. Um, so he, he, I have one problem with the samples you provided. Maybe when I watch your video of the debunk, I will actually like agree that it's being debunked. But okay. I remember I have another um, reference. I remember when a certain um, um, there was a a Russian uh, right uh, political writer, I guess uh, he's not really a historian. He wrote a, a history book, a revision history book, and people attacked him on detail. I don't value attacks on detail much because people are probably uh, there. Are, there are many broad criticisms in this video ah, as well concerning excellent. his characterization of uh, Hume, of Kant, of. Um, the failure to mention yeah. that he's a Ayn Rand devotee. I, I mean, um, no, none of these sound other... like uh, this is very strange to me. Shouldn't you be able to tell me, like instantly, when you say that Stephen Hicks has been debunked? Shouldn't there be like a major, just a very succinct counter argument to his position about postmodernism? And all I hear, like, is that, oh, it's somewhere in there, but, oh, by the way, here have these juicy details about stuff you got apparently wrong. Um, well, the idea that he, like, conflates a bunch of things with postmodernism, like conflating feminism with postmodernism, conflating Marxism with postmodernism. What is... That sounds more serious, but is he actually in the lecture? It doesn't seem to be conflating them. He explains how I haven't seen the lecture. I can watch the lecture and then give you okay. Like, so, sure. um, it appears that we are tenant has watched a source, you've watched a source, you haven't seen the others. We can have the weird discussion where we talk about our respective sources, yeah, without you're right. actually having read them. But it seems you tell, I would agree, maybe. All, like, it, um, it, you guys need to watch each other's sources. Yeah. We will. Excellent. Wait, is this this lecture is two hours? I guess you're gonna watch it. I'll just um. Yeah, it's just a non-stopping source. I was gonna say your video is like 15 minutes. I'm like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> but like, yeah, well, yeah, you guys. The entire book. This is a more recent video, so maybe it's actually better. But uh, there is a video in from 2016. And here is an excerpt from that video. So I, I don't know. I haven't watched this 2018 one, but I will. Just to be sure that it's the same lecture. How Marxism led to postmodernism. Here's his explanation from Philosophy Insights, which is an excerpt channel. Yeah, sure. That's 20 um, minutes. Yeah, I, I think it's good if you two, like, go okay. away and re watch these things and then come back and chat about them. Because sure, all this is going to be super weird. weird. Yeah, sure. Yeah. No, let's skip this topic. It's fine. No, it's, it's not a bad toy. It's just that it's really no, no, weird. You're right. I, I, I haven't. Yeah, we have to come back to it. We will. It's fine. Yeah. Next yeah. Week. Ex exactly. Rain check it. Um, <laughs> it's only that like I don't even know Ida Soul, so I need to go and watch these things as well. And it's just like, um, yeah. Um, InSync, about your point on um, like trees, right? Uh. 
I think that like uh, some kind of like evolution thing happens, yeah. And you can have you can have potentially two unrelated philosophical trees develop the same features, you know, because they're trying to address the same fe- um, problems about the world. So I imagine that ph- um, pol- politics should eventually be convergent, right? Sure, they, they're, sure, but. Yeah. No, but I think what I'm describing is that there's a reason that Jordan Peterson is saying that they're related, and Julius's objection is just, well, they're inconsistent, and it's like, yeah, they, uh, of course, they're inconsistent. They think different things. You know what I mean? But that's not why yeah. we're saying they're related. Throughout history, that have disadvantaged these groups, like that's one of the major things which has been the like, keeping us around. Well, maybe if they lost the victim card for a start, they could get somewhere. They've been losing the victim card this entire time. That's why well, people they keep don't... perpetuating, oh, it's Whitey's fault. Well, it kinda is. Well, you like... can't blame whites for everything. We built the civilization. <laughs> that is one of the dumbest... Okay, that's not what people are saying at all. I'm accepting. Let's say I'm accepting the premise that they that the vegans have the health side one. Like, uh, I'm accepting your, your, your arguments for that. So, oh. if in the end, the argument then would be that's better for me. But Eh, I, I, I just don't care. Is, is really the stance, is the only stance that they can take a, a moral frowning upon you? Um, well, if you're just, Kevin, if you're, if you just like, well, okay, so these are the two things, right? So you can use the same. Well, like historically, it's pretty clear that humans are going to come up with these ideas again, even if you like deny them the opportunity to explore them now. Like there's a reason that humans continually come up with the same ideas over history. Yeah, and so I, just, I don't. I just don't really see how it solves the problem mm-hmm. in the long term because I think humans are going to come up with the ideas again, and the more you, I, I don't know. I have this distinct problem with treating the opposition as if.